All right, so welcome back uh, uh, to the last um, afternoon of uh, our conference. Um, so the next speaker is Alberto Berkowski from uh, the uh, National University in Mexico at Cuernavaca. And he will speak on Hilbert Blumenthal and Bianchi Quaternionic Orifolds. Um, thank you, Alberto. Oh. Okay, thank you very much for, as usual, I thank the organizers, especially Ernesto, who was so kind to invite me to this conference. I, I'm sorry I was not able to go to be present, but I hope you don't uh, erase me from your list of participants. Okay, here's the title, Herbert Blumenthal and Bianchi Quaternion Corbifus. Usually, uh, they only use the word Hilbert, forget him, is it, the thesis of Blumenthal. I like, I like to put the name Blumenthal because he actually make a good contribution on that. So uh, this is the outline. The main aim of this work in progress with uh, Adrian Centeno from CIMAT is to study Möbius transformations. The group is called PSL2O. Uh, so transformations of the form AQ plus B over uh, multiplied by CQ plus D. We notice here that it's exactly like AZ plus the classical AZ in the complex case, AZ plus B divided by CQ plus E. And the only thing here to notice is that the, I will be working with non commutative fields. And therefore, this transformation are exactly as I wrote it the A on the left, the C on the left, the inverse on the right. And Q, uh, actually, uh, the range where Q varies will be. Uh, a K algebra, a, a quaternion algebra of number field K and A, B, C, D are going to belong to an order of the ring of integers of K. I will explain a little bit about that, where K is a number field. And what I'm trying to do is to generalize in this setting the classical model of use of Hilbert, Blumenthal, Bianchi, and, uh, the, and see their properties, their actions. They act in the natural way in five dimensional hyperbolic spaces, product of, of hyperbolic spaces of dimension four. It says, and this is based on, uh, on the two papers. I mean, this starts with that many papers. It's, it's, uh, many people are, have worked on that, of course. And this paper, in this first paper, I, we try to generalize to the quaternionic setting, the classical, and this, this is the second one. So let's start by seeing the algebraic setting. I must say that uh, I'm more a geometer than algebraic, uh, a number theorist, but my co fortunately my collaborator is a number theorist, so he really put things. So let K, let K be a field of characteristic zero. And we say that K, a K algebra B is a quaternion algebra or a K. If it's a four dimensional, uh, uh, Algebra over K when generate uh, when there exist I, J, and B such that uh, these four elements generate as a vector space K and satisfy the usual Hamilton quaternion relations. Sometimes I omit the K and this region. And the, uh, in the case the field is the real numbers and A is equal to minus one and B is equal to minus one, well, that's the classical. Hamilton quaternions uh, in the ninth of the 19th century. But this generalizes, we can take A and B, any two uh, non-zero numbers. And this is the algebra. And the notation for that is usually this parentheses, A, B, K, or by that is a canonical notation. And here I say when K, when the field is the real numbers and the uh, the A and B are minus one, then this is the usual Hamilton quaternions. And uh, there's a sort of a dichotomy. If B is any, if the base field is R, K, then there's a, a dichotomy. Either B is the algebra of two by two real matrices, or B is the quaternions. There's only these two possibilities. And the quaternions occur only if A and B are both negative. On the other hand, if the, if the base field is, a, is complex numbers, then all the algebras are just the algebra of two by two matrix. 
for any choice of AIB, not a non-zero comp non complex numbers. Well, here I see a picture, you know, if you remember the classical um, uh, fundamental domain of the, uh, 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 of the modular group PSL to Z, P PSL to Z acting on the upper half plane, you remember that uh, this is a domain that is between two parallel lines and a semicircle. And in fact, the fundamental domains of the groups I, I'm, I'm about to describe have fundamental domains that are very similar geometric. So they have like a dome, which is a three dimensional or four dimensional sphere, half sphere, and sort of a, each of two walls, like in the case of the modular surface, we have several walls, vertical walls. Uh, so these are schematic pictures of the fundamental domains. And you see, the, uh, if you take the, uh, the boundary of the hyperbolic space, this notation here means is the one dimensional quaternionic hyperbolic space. And this is the follow. You take the quaternions, you think of it as R4, and you take the quaternions whose real part is positive. This, is, this replaces the classical model group where you take the complex, play, the complex numbers having imaginary, positive imaginary part, the upper half plane. Here, we choose instead of that, quaternions that have positive real parts. And this can be um, endowed with a, a hyperbolic metric. And the boundary is the floor, namely the value of that is the quaternions whose, whose um, uh, real part is zero, namely the R3 are the purely imaginary quaternions is the boundary of four dimensional hyperbolic space. And, but we, are, we can also think of the five dimensional uh, real hyperbolic space whose boundary is S, S4. And this is just a, so, so inspired by complex conjugation in, in the quaternion algebra B, you define the usual conjugation. And the system of social evolution allows us to define a trace, reduced trace, Q plus Q bar, and the reduced norm uh, Q times Q bar. This is the square of the Euclidean norm. And well, the trace, as you can see here, is a linear map with respect to the field K. It's a K linear map. And the, the norm, the reduced norm is multiplicative, obviously. And it's very important to, as I, as I told you, the pure imaginary or pure uh, pure elements of the quaternion algebra B is defined as all those whose trace is zero. Uh, so it's a hyperplane, in, uh, it's a three dimensional subspace in this space. And uh, you also have the, the, the elements in the quaternion algebra of, of reduced norm equal to one. And in the case of the classical Hamilton, we, we, know, we all know that the pure quaternions is R3 generated by I, J, and K. Uh, the pure, the pure, pure imaginary Hamiltonians, and uh, the set of quaternions of number one we know is a three, and it's a group on their multiplication, and of course it's uh, uh, as a group it's isomorphic to SU two, and um, the group of of unit quaternions acts by rotations of this form, and it's a it's a it's use it's a very useful way to describe. Uh, rotations and geometry. And so this, act, uh, this, uh, this action here by conjugation um, uh, uh, leads to this exact sequence. So this is, so you, is a, H1 is an extension of order two of SO3. So we can think H1 from this exact sequence, we can see that we can think of H1 as SU2. Um, and of course, H12 is a group of rotation. It's very useful to describe uh, from uh, platonic solids, et cetera, and all the Mackey correspondence are beautiful. Well, from the, there's a, cl a classification of final groups of SO3 that dates back to Felix Klein. And uh, you have a, the possibility of final groups of the rotation group is a cyclic group of order N 
leaving invariant an, uh, an axis and a plane and rotating by by uh, two pi and n, the binary uh, or dicyclic group, the binary tetrahedral group, the binary octahedral group, those are symmetries of the, these are the symmetries of the, come from the symmetries of the classical uh, platonic solids, the, the tetrahedral, the octahedral or cube, and the icosahedral, icosahedral you have here. And here's, it's a very beautiful, uh, uh, um, lecture notes by Nagy-France Vignera, a mimetic de It's a really beautiful uh, thing where you can see all that. Well, uh, I told you that I want to study P PSL 2O, where O is an order. So let me introduce the notation. So essentially all the fields we're gonna consider K are gonna be number fields uh, finite dimensional extensions of the rationals. So let Q be uh, an extension, uh, Q square root of N, where N is a, a quadrat fry integer. And as we know, the Gal Galois group is a cyclic for the two and is exactly as the elements of Q are written in the form alpha plus beta square root of N with alpha beta rational. And there's a unique uh, Galois transformation. It's a change in the sign of this part conjugation. And this uh, beautiful field has a ring of integers, which we usually is called O, calligraphic O of K, but we, we call it this most mo modern notation, Z sub index K. And this, uh, as a group, is Z theta, which is uh, isomorphic to zeta plus theta zeta, and where theta is, so our, our numbers are an integers plus an integer times n or an integer times one average. So the, uh, this dichotomy depends on the on the on the modulo, modulo if it's modulo, uh, congruent to one mod four or, or different. Okay. Okay. So. Again, consider consider now two uh, two non-zero elements in the in the field of integer in the in the in the ring of integers of of k, and consider the quaternion algebra that. So there's a very natural example of a zk order. So a zk order is by definition. Uh, I don't know if I I don't know if I put it here. Uh, yeah, here I forgot this one. I'm oh, sorry. No wonder I was wrong. I forgot this. So give it a place V of K. So a place of K is a equivalence class evaluation or an embedding of K. You take a K mu the completion of, 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 the, of the field at the place V and this isomorphic to R or to C. These are the Archimedean paces. Or if they, the valuation is not Archimedean, is a, a final extension of QP. Uh, we say that quaternion algebra is totally definite. If for all Archimedean places, you have that. And there's this also this dichotomy. With this a complex place, this is always isomorphic to the ring of two by two matrices with complex coefficients. So if this totally difficult any level k, the k is necessarily real quadratic fields. So we're only essentially the, uh, in this case, we have that. And now this is the definition I want to emphasize. This will play, this will um, uh, that's our 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 goal is to generalize PSL to Z, the modular group. We have to replace the integers by something bigger, and the nice, the natural thing to do is to replace by a zk order O. Uh, so a zk order O in a quaternion algebra B over the field K is a four-dimensional zk lattice. So it's a lattice of dimension. It's a module of dimension four over over zk. That, but what is important here is closed under multiplication and has a unit. And O is maximal, of course, is, is not contained in any, in any other order. 
is not properly contained in any other. So you might think of this as, uh, for instance, in the, say, in, in the, in the, for the field Q, uh, the integer, well, okay. A max, maximum CK orders are very analogous of rings of integers of number fields, which are usually lattices in. But some difference here is that uh, 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 rings of integers of a field are always unique, but in, in a quaternion al algebra, we can have many maximal orders. And here for we can twist the, here's the idea. We, we, we can twist the, or, uh, the, the order by a, an, a, an element of norm one, and uh, that makes it not unique. Here's an example. And this is actually the most natural example of an order. So you take a K, a field, which we might th when I think of K as a quadratic, real quadratic field, and uh, A being non zero elements. But we take it A and B to belong to the non zero elements in the ring of integers of, of K. And then the most natural thing to do is to take all combinations like that. See, so this is, a, uh, this is a, an element in the uh, ring of integers of K. I, I, well, this actually has its origin with a beautiful work of Lipschitz and Hurwitz. I mean, Lipschitz considered all quaternions such that the entries a, a real part, the I part, the J part, and the K part are integers. And this is obviously a uh, lattice, four dimensional lattice in, in, in the quaternions, you identify as R4, and it's close on their multiplication, obviously, and it has a unit, so it's perfectly, a perfectly thing. Uh, and um, uh, actually, Lipschitz uh, considered this to prove that every integer can be describes the sum of four integers. And then, uh, <clears throat> this is an example. You see, but also after Lipschitz uh, came Hurwitz, who defined uh, an order for the quaternion, Hamilton quaternions, are those uh, quaternions such that the coefficients are either all integers or all half integers. It's forbidden to, to melange. It either all the integers or have integers. And surprisingly, this is close to their multiplication order. And this is a, a generalization here. It's called Hur for Hurwitz. So you introduce this. By doing that, this, this order consists of elements uh, of the ring of integers, the coefficient elements of the ring of integers will have so this, this generalizes that. And uh, this uh, is based on this. Uh, so essentially in this paper here, what we do is consider Moebius transformations A, B, C, D, or A, B, C, D are quaternions, which are other Lipschitz integers or Hurwitz integers. So it's a natural generalization of PSL to C. Well, here another example, I put here, this is a, this is just an example, I, I go fast through, it's an example where uh, you see Q square root of five is very interesting because it involves in a natural way, the golden number, the golden number phi, the golden ratio. And so here, this is just to very quickly I go, is to prove that, to show examples where the orders are not maximal. And as I told you, the non-uniqueness of, of this order is because of the unit groups. So in number theory, uh, a very important subgroup of the ring of integers is the group of uh, invertible elements of the, of the ring of integers. When K is a real quadratic field, the, the beautiful theorem, a classical theorem of Dirichlet, 
say that the ring, ring of integers is like this. Namely, if you think the non-zero real numbers, you have all positive powers of epsilon and all negative powers of epsilon. So you think of two copies of an infinite cyclic group, one in, po in the positive reals, in the, and this is gener generated by epsilon, and epsilon you can normalize it always so is a is a unit uh, which is greater than one, and because we can, can uh, and this uh, greater than one for the canonical embedding. So a quadratic field can be embedded in a natural way because it's of the form rational plus square root of n times another rational, so it's a canonical embedding. And, but however, for, for other quaternion algebras, it's very complicated or more complicated. In particular, it can have, you see here, for the real quadratic field, there's no torsion Essentially, the units are plus minus one. And here you can have more complicated uh, units. And in fact, this will involve the platonic solids. And here you have, here's a description in terms of the order of the units. So this is, O1 are the, uh, the units of number one. This is the multiplicative group of the uh, of the order, and you have this exact sequence here like that. So this is only very quickly go, is because uh, the binary octahedral group and the, uh, unlike the quadratic, uh, you see these groups enter here. So square root of two and square root of five play a special role because involve the octahedral and the dodecahedral. But now these are just uh, um, algebraic things that uh, are important to the world, but I want to go to the main topic that is Moebius transformations. So here we go. So consider the, the, the set of quaternion, two by two quaternionic matrices. So matrices of the form A, B, C, D, where A, B, C, and D are quaternions. Then we define the general linear group of quaternions as a set of, of, of invertible matrices of that. Well, for in order to, to have a, a, a well-defined notion, the important notion is the, the unique determinant of a quaternionic matrix. This is given this way. This general ash is the natural uh, determinant. So the determinant so we can denote using this the quaternionic matrix of the determinant equal to one. And now notice the following. This as a as a vector space, real vector space has dimension 16 because A, B, C, and D are quaternions. So four, four, four is 16. If you impose the condition that the determinant be equal to one, you have a 15 dimensional group, the group for quaternionic matrix A, B, C, D with the determinant equal to one is a group of dimension 15. Now 15 is exactly the dimension of the isometries or hyperbolic space of dimension five. And that's not like, uh, an accident, that's because that's exactly what we, we've happened. So this is important, a, a matrix is invertible if and only if the unit determinant is zero. So you define the special linear group at those quaternionic matrices that have that. And now, once we have that, we can start thinking of A, B, C, and D to belong to special uh, subsets, special groups that will play the will replace the role of the integers. So here we go. So you take a real quadratic field, and which can be, of course, embedded in R. Then the quaternion algebra is totally definite. You can embed it in H. So you can embed. 
the quaternion algebra can embed it in H. And by restriction, we can embed the quaternion order in K. So we can express specifically sense, sense to speak of two by two quaternionic matrices with entries in this order. E and uh, one thing is this small uh, lemma that is easy, but it's computational. You have to, it's not, a, it's not completely trivial a priori, is if you take of all two by two quaternionic matrices with entries in an order of, 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 of this algebra BK, uh, this actually is a group. And here's the calculation. You know, you have to work a little bit. Finally, you it's closed under multiplication. You have to prove that the inverse belongs. And here, this is the proof. I won't bother you with that, but the point is that this is a group. Okay, so now, very quickly, I went a little fast, but we are able to define quaternionic matrices with entries in something that resembles the integers. We are trying to generalize PSL to Z, so we have done the first step. So, but first let's, let's take the general case, take any two by two quaternionic matrix. And we define the quaternionic Mobius transformation like that. And the important thing to know is that the order is important, A to the left, C to the left, and the inverse to the right. And the usual conventions of infinity, where, where does infinity go, so where does infinity come from? And so H is R4, so with the one point compactification is the sphere. And we can think like, just like the complex case, this quaternionic uh, matrix act in S4. But they are beautiful because uh, now two, two Moebius, transform Moebius transformations are determined by the matrix A, B, C, D. So when do two matrices define the same Moebius transformation? And this is the, this is the answer. The matrix, the matrix gamma one and the matrix gamma two determine the same Moebius transformation on this four sphere, if and only if is uh, one is tie the identity gamma. And so this implies that the, ah, the important thing is that this, uh, the, these maps, these way of transformations actually are orientation perceiving conformal diffeomorphs of the sphere. So it's a very synthetic way to think of diffeomorphies of the fourth sphere that preserve angles and orientations can be given just like in the complex case by a very concrete formula. And uh, so you have, by this observation, we have the, a, a, the set of conformal maps which preserve the orientation of the fourth sphere is this group. The group of two by two matrices divided by the scalar matrices. And we call as standard PSL, the projectivization of SL2. And so PSL2H will be the set of conformal transformations of the zero. But one beautiful discovery by Poincare, which he does in purely geometrical terms, is that any conformal transformation of the sphere, <coughs> if you think of the sphere as the, as the boundary, the open, open ball of dimension five, uh, five any conformal transformation of the sphere extends to the interior as a conformal map and therefore as an isometry with respect to the Poincare metric. And so we have this beautiful, the set of two by two quaternionic matrices with the determinant one divided by up to scalar matrices is isomorphic to the group of isometries of the open ball with the Poincare metric. But we can think of the Poincare metric also, we can take the upper space model of the hyperbolic ball. So is the, the set of all points in the in the in R5 such that the last coordinate is positive. So this we have this equality of groups. Uh, well, now there are some special transformation depending on the choices A, B, C. So first we have the left homothetic transformation that takes a quaternion ascends it to C times Q. Then we have a translation 
And finally, you have the most exotic one that is inversion of quaternions. With the usual convention, infinity goes to zero and zero goes to infinity. And one thing that we learned from the book of Alphors that I learned when I was little is that any Mobius transformation can be expressed as a product of homotetic transformations, translations, and inversion. And here's the proof, a very simple proof that ABCD is translated on the left by C minus 1D. So given ABCD, do the following operation. Translates on the, uh, by this amount. Take the ho left homotetic transformation by Z. I'm supposed to see different from zero. Then invert, then et cetera, et cetera, and you arrive to the trans So this is what I want to do. Actually, this already proves, it's a very simple proof that a Moebius transformation preserves angles because each of these operations, homotetic transformation, translation, preserves angles. Well, now here's the, remember that the classical modular group as in the upper complex space, half space in the complex plane, the complex number with positive imaginary part. So we are gonna replace that with this object. So it's a set of all quaternions, so that the real part is positive. We do this because you actually, you actually have three imaginary parts, I, J, and K. And so what do you mean by imaginary parts? So it's more democratic to think of all quaternions that have positive real parts. <coughs> so, so this is a, 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 a space of dimension four. Uh, and uh, the set of, of quaternions with real parts zero are the quaternions imagina imaginary uh, pure, purely imaginary, and the by R4 into two pieces, and the ones with positive is play the role of the upper half space problem. And of course, this space has the, the, the Lobachevsky Poincare metric given by that, generalizes the, dx squared plus dy squared divided by y squared. And uh, you may wonder what are the group of Moebius transformations that is invariant this, this, uh, this half space. If you compactify one point the quaternions, you may think of this as, uh, uh, as, the, as the forest sphere and the, and, uh, and the equator, one part of the equator. Well, the conditions are, uh, so, oh, sorry. So what are the conditions? We know that <coughs> we know that for the complex case, a matrix that presents the upper half plane is belongs to PSL2R. It's A, B, C, and D are real. And we have to replace that by what? Well, these are the conditions. A quaternionic matrix of the determinant one, A, B, C, D, gamma. Uh, sorry, gamma. Uh, preserves the half space if and only these three equivalent conditions, which are, are is, a very, is given by Bizi and Gentili from Florence, but actually was given by Valen and Alfors. This is just a, a different interpretation. Is the set of all matrices that have this property. A matrix A, B, C, D with the determinant one this invariant they have the space if and only if this property, where T is the canonical transpose and bar is the quaternionic uh, conjugation. And these conditions can be given in terms of these two alternatives. This contains this group, the group of, of Moebius transformations that, that presents the upper half plane has a special group, it's a fine group. You see the complex play, plane, the matrix is that have zero in the in the in the last, in the low uh, lower part of the matrix, matrix so the form A B zero T uh, is formed a fine group, and here is the same thing. This is a group that has the property that preserves is the fine group is where you have that. 
And uh, this group is, uh, of course, lives in variant. This is a group that is a diffeomorphism when restricted to the quaternions of, of purely imaginary quaternions. So this lives in variant, the purely imaginary quaternions. And it acts as the conformal maps of R3. If we then identify the imaginary quaternions of R3 using the coordinates of I, J, and K, this is the group of conformal transformations of Euclidean space R3. And we have an Iwasawa decomposition. So any, oh, sorry, any matrix which preserves the half space, the four half space, can be written uniquely in this form. A homotetic transformation, a translation by a pure imaginary. And this is very, very beautiful because then you can also see that the geometry of that. Now, we try to generalize what the Bianchi group. Remember, if you take a, a, a pure imaginary quadratic field, for instance, uh, 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 the Picard group or, or the Einstein group, then you can take matrices, <coughs> two by two complex matrices whose entries are uh, integers in, uh, in uh, Q square root of minus three. And the rig of integers are the Einstein integers, which form the canonical beautiful hexagonal lattice. And this, of course, doesn't act uh, properly and discontinuously on the sphere, but it extends in a natural way to hyperbolic space by Poincare extension theorem. And there, the, the action on, on hyperbolic free space is, uh, is properly discontinuous not free, but properly discontinuous, but as a consequence, the quotient is a three beautiful three-dimensional uh, hyperbolic orbifold because has or stack, because Ernesto is there, a beautiful stack, three-dimensional stack. We can compute the fundamental group, the, all the properties. And actually I talk about the Poincare extension. The Poincare extension is given exactly this. So you take a group like that, ABCD with ABCD belong to an order, not necessarily maximal, any order. And this is the formula that gives you an extension to this five dimensional space. So we will think of hyperbolic real space of dimension five as the quaternions, think of the quaternions as four times the positive reals. So it's a five dimension, everything. And the formula is given like that. It's so any group, so here you can see that it's a Klein and beautiful Klein and group, and the phi is an orf, uh, 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 orful, hyperbolic orbital of dimension five. So this is beautiful because anytime you give an order in a quaternion algebra, I give you a hyperbolic manifold of dimension four. Well, now let's, let's see a little bit more. Consider now, uh, a quadratic field, uh, a ZK is rig of integers, and OK, a quaternion order of a totally definite quad. So we take a quaternion al algebra with base field, this quadratic field. And we know that the, 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 the embedding of the rig of integers are, is not discrete. In fact, our numbers of the, of, of the form, an, uh, m plus square root of, of n times m, if n is con congruent to one mod, mod four. And you see that that is, uh, by Kronecker, this is a dense subgroup. Um, it relates a little bit with the talk by, by Ernesto because it's a quasi lattice. Uh, so, but uh, therefore PSL2O is not a discrete subgroup of this. But however, the great idea of Hilbert that was written in the thesis by Blumenthal is that CK admits an embedding like that. And here is discrete, looks like a lattice. So the rig of integers doesn't embed discrete in R, 
but invest discreetly in R cross R. And this is the beautiful idea <coughs> developed by Minkowski of how, how to associate a lattice, a two dimensional lattice, not a quasi lattice in the sense of an extra real lattice in R cross R. And therefore, that was the brilliant idea of, of Hilbert because now you have a discrete embedding into the, of the order is embedding the, in H cross H, or H the, the Hamilton quaternions. And this is the formula. So any order embeds discreetly here. And as a consequence, uh, this group em, em, embeds as a discrete subgroup of the product of two copies of that. So here is an A, B, C, D. And here a sigma A, sigma B, sigma C, sigma D. You twist it by a Galois. And uh, well, here I just recall the Minkowski. Uh, and now this group now acts in, in this. And, and therefore, if you take this product of, of half spaces or dimension four, this group acts and gives you uh, an order full of dimension eight. And uh, one way to think is thinking of two copies of the, of the half spaces and given a pair of points here you add the ABC and here by the twisted matrix. And you have to impose the conditions to preserve the BG conditions. And therefore, this is a nat natural. The, the, the group of, 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 uh, of Mobius transformations that satisfies the, the BG conditions of this type, where B is a purely imaginary element, uh, is the group of translations. And so you here you have given B1, B2, you have this, this action. Okay. Anyhow, so let me just synthesize. I have to I put too many pages in my talk. So let's let's repeat. You you take K a real quadratic field. O, a quaternion CK order in the quaternion algebra BK. And so the Hilbert Bloom and the quaternion reform is that you take two copies of a <coughs> the product of, of the upper half plane of dimension four times the upper half space of dimension four and divide by the action of these matrices with entries in the quaternion algebra. Remember that on the first factor acts as A, B, C, D, and on the second factor you twist by the by the Galois action. Okay, and now this uh, following the idea of Hirschelbruch did the same thing in the case of the complex plane, and he he proved something fantastic. He proved that a Hilbert Bloomington surface is a complex surface with singularities because it has torsion; it's an orbifold, but has can be compactified with only a number of finite of points, and this final number of points is equal to the class number of the fields. And the costs actually can be resolved and gives you uh, examples of complex surfaces in the codiron request transformation. And the because this is a conference of singularities, something very beautiful we haven't done is how these real singularities, uh, can you resolve the singularities in the, in the quaternionic case? So any case, here's the same thing. In this case, what we prove is that this orifold here can be compactified with a finite number of points. And the structure of these uh, points are essentially the following way. Is a cross looks like a cusp with a cross section. Is a is a virtual cis one torus bundle. So what is that? 
Well, let me go to this. Doing the arithmetic, consider this matrix. This matrix A is a six by six matrix with entries in a ring of integers and it acts on a torus. Acts, or acts, acts on R6, preserving the lattice. And therefore, we, we can think of this matrix A as a linear automorphism of a six dimensional torus. If you take the mapping torus of this A, you have a manifold of dimension seven with fibers over the circle, with fiber a six dimensional torus. And this is the, cop the section of the cusp. So to that, you, 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 uh, uh, the cost looks like the cone over this space. Uh, I mean, for the modular orifold, remember that the, the uh, a cross section is this little circle that encircles the cost. In the, in the pseudo sphere, remember, there's a little circle that tends to zero, tends to the cost. Here is the same thing, except instead of the circle, we have a manifold dimension seven. Because remember, the orifice is a dimension eight. You have a manifold of dimension seven. That is a is a uh, is a, a soft manifold. It's a manifold of dimension. This is whose fundamental group is a, is that Z corresponds to the because fibers of the circle. If this corresponds to the fiber is the torus. So it's a manifold that fibers of the circle with fiber the torus and monodromy given by this matrix. <coughs> thinking of this matrix as an automorphism of a torus. Well, here you have other examples. I think that this is a, a for, for square root of two, this is a beautiful example. Remember the fa famous cat map of Arnold? It's actually an oso physiomorphism. So these are these three copies of an oso. So uh, it has an enormous amount of of, of dynamical systems, it's a beautiful. So I'm going very fast, but I tell you why in, in a few words and use my hands, like uh, like Marcel Marceau. <laughs> so you take two copies of of half spaces of dimension four, H four cross H four, and you act by a matrix by a Möbius transformation that preserves half space with entries in an order of a quadratic field. In the other is the same matrix, but twisted by a Galois. And now the action is properly discontinuous, but has torsion, doesn't matter. And the quotient is a beautiful, manifold, but actually is a, okay, more examples. I think I'm gonna leave it there. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Alberto. Is there any question? So Alberto, uh, there is this. Um, oh, there's Hello? a question by Otto Romero. Sorry, first the other question. Otto Romero is asking a question. Ah, sí, muy bien. A ver, Otto. Okay, but in English. She's asking, what is the volume of the. What is the volume of Bianchi quaternionic orbifolds? Ah, yes, it's a beautiful question. The orbifold of the or, or quaternionic manifold is given by a value of the zeta function of the of the of the Dedekind zeta function of a given field as a special value of two, as you know very well. It has finite volume because you can compute the fundamental domain. And of course, I did, did put so much material, put 70 pages, it's a mistake of always. But since you can give the fundamental domain as a as a hyperbolic polyhedron. From this fundamental domain, you can actually read a la coxeter. You can read the, the generators and relators of the group, and you can compute the Euler characteristic, and you can, uh, in dimension four, it's easy because uh, it's like uh, gauss bonnet are multiples of two pi, multiples of pi, rational multiples of pi, the volumes. But, you can also do it by dynamical system, as you know, by as a limit of horocycle. But but we 
uh, horocycle foliations, but we, I haven't done that. Okay, Otto. Thank you. Uh, so uh, there is this uh, basic Mackay correspondence uh, of subgroups SL2C uh -huh. uh, for the singularities, declining singularities. Exactly. And um, uh, what new versions of Mackay correspondence do you expect using this circle of I, re I, I really don't know, but I know that uh, the, the ubiquity of the Dinkin diagrams should be here also, but I don't understand what, because now the singularities, you, you, they are not complex, so you have to use uh, real the singularization, which is valid. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. So the re resolution of singularities uh, in the, so what, what is known about resolution of singularities? Four very symmetric group quotient singularities of this very specific groups in the quaternionic case is known. Well, I, I, I really don't know eh, the answer to your question, but I know- Because that... the, the, there should be an algorithm, just like the algorithm is very simple for the complex uh, Kleinian ones. Uh -huh. I wouldn't be surprised at all that while general resolution of singularities in the quaternionic realm could be astoundingly difficult to approach, this resolution of singularity should be algorithmic. So, well, the non commutativity, I mean, I tell you, let me give you my, 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 my yeah, yeah, yeah. version of that. A Klein singularities, I mean, the McKay correspondence in my mind and is associated to the triples. Two three three two three four two two three two three three two three four two three five. That's right. And you give me tetrahedral, octahedral, icosahedral, and their duals. Ah, well, also PPP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which are the dihedral groups, but uh, and this is because this universality and the ubiquity of the Dinkin diagrams and that. It's because if you give me the triple, in my that's my view eh, that I learned from Blaine Lawson. If you give me the triple PQR, 233, 234, 235, I immediately think of the brisk singularity Z1 to the square plus C2 to the Q. That's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. The, and the lengths of those singularities are precisely the three dimensional manifolds that correspond to SU2 divided by the corresponding final group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, now, what I tried to do when I was little, I completely failed, non-commutativity of the quaternion system. I say, I'm gonna take Q1 to the square plus Q2 to the cube plus Q3 to the cube. Actually, take two, three, five. So this is, yeah, a, yeah. This is a quaternion singularity in H cross H cross H and take the link and wow, I'm gonna get something beautiful. It was very little, eh? I, I, didn't, I was maybe yeah, yeah. second year of, of, of at Brown. And then I started working and you know what? Nothing works. Hmm. The no commutativity and the, every, because many of these things depends that you can truncate polynomials and you have, you have the power of complex variables. You yes, have the commutativity. Course. And here it's a, it's a mess, nothing works. A natural thing for every. But if you, you, know, saw, you, but if you saw Enrique's Enrique's talk, uh, it is very intriguing because at least one side of that story has no problem, you know, uh, because it's a fully non-commutative Hodge structure argument. So um, it's intriguing. It's intriguing. We should talk more about this. Yeah, it's a beautiful question. I always have it in my mind. You know, brisk or manifolds. You know, the, one of the things that I enjoy more, the most when I was a uh, young girl is that you can get exotic spheres a la Milner by polyno uh, weighted polynomials <laughs> in five yeah. variables. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The five, three, two, two, two. So I say, why do I take Q1 to the five plus Q2 to the three plus Q3 to the square plus Q4 to the square plus Q5 to the square equals zero? and see what happens. The Maybe the problem- The singularity is not isolated, so that's the main problem. Yeah, 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 that's one thing. But maybe the problem is that 
one should think of this as really, as we have been thinking recently, non-commutative spaces. And maybe one can progress maybe, a little yeah. bit. Very nice, beautiful. Yeah, but you know, I sorry that I, I gave so much material that, but anyhow, I, uh, I'm gonna send you my slides. And yes, we'll please. Be yeah. Yes. We'll be, we'll be better for everybody. And, happens, uh, this happens to me all the time. See, this I can give in two seconds. And then I realize that even myself, I don't understand what I'm talking about. I apologize. But anyhow, the no, ideas no. are there. The ideas are there. All the questions. Uh, let's thank our speaker again. Thank you very much. Sir.